so for me to tap into verse 9 where jesus says as the father has loved me so have i loved you abide in my love i need to obey this commandment what is this commandment love one another as i have loved you says so oh god so i close my bible has the lord shown me now do i have anything against anyone and the lord showed me yes this one this one one or two people he said you're not in a right relationship with i said okay 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 thank you thank you so immediately i made a decision and i thought of that individual and i said i forgive you i forgive you i forgive you bless you i bless you bless you this one i forgive you i forgive you i forgive you god bless him bless him sincerely i forgive and i blessed and these two people are far away from me but i know when i see them close at hand i'll feel uncomfortable i'm not a free man so i must come to a place where i can see him in the face smile at him and say you're my brother i love you you know and that's happened recently this brother who i had this strained relationship for nearly 5 years every day i would pray say lord jesus heal 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 this relationship heal this relationship heal this relationship and then the lord showed me that it's not fully healed then then i said bless him i kept on every day bless him bless him bless him and the other day you know i i got an email and then in that email he had sent it to everyone to lots of people he mentioned about some need of his So at once I said, "Wow, this is a good opportunity now. I'll go and give him something." I didn't have his home address, so I I sent him an email. I said, "Please send me your home address. I want to send you something towards this need of yours." Then he sent by an email saying, "No, no, no. I know you're a full-time missionary. I didn't expect you to respond. Let others who are earning and having a job let them respond." I said, "No. Please send me your address. I want to send you something. Love your enemies. Do good to them. That." hate you bless them that curse you pray for them that persecute you that is christianity and you know i'm so busy i didn't my the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak so the other day at, at someone's funeral he was there so i went and i gave him a hug and then i told him i said you know i i told you i'll send you something and uh, i i i haven't sent it but i'll send it so he laughed at me and says you know fritz soon as i got to email saying that you're going to send me something i told my wife you'll see even until next year you won't send anything <laughs> this guy so forgetful he won't send anything so it was like he said it in a nice way when he spoke like that in a nice way that stone in my heart went and i laughed he laughed and very recently i came face to face with him we sat and we chatted so one fellow has gone off the list now there is another fellow that i am praying 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 for the opportune time so when you start your time of prayer first thing jesus says in mark chapter 11 25 whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone look into your heart are you in a right relationship are you having resentment are you having bitterness are you having judgment are you having anger unforgiveness in your heart towards someone then you are wasting your time praying yes or no see now coming to how to come out of sin yes or no so the first thing you must do is make a decision to forgive so lord i forgive this person who has hurt me i forgive that person who has slandered my name whatever it is who has cheated me whatever it is i forgive my husband forgive my wife we all cause hurts must forgive 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 now i can go back to verse 9 now listen carefully now this love that jesus has what does jesus say there as the father has loved me so have i loved you abide in my love we'll just pray in tongues for a little while because i want you to understand what i'm trying to say to you come on 
Let the Holy Spirit enlighten you. La shalla dev la shalla dev la ram la vagandi mesimia. No shalla dev la ram la vagandi la ram la vagandi mesimia. La shalla dev la ram la vagandi om shukro. La shalla dev la ram la vagandi mesimia. La shalla dev la ram la vagandi mesimia. No mala shakala chila korama. No mala shalla kara shiki kukura pamala. No mala sharala marala. Okay. So Jesus says that the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Now this love of Jesus is very down to earth, very practical, meeting me in my need. The best way I can explain it is like this. You're a mother, you're a father, yes or no? You're at home. And your child comes from school and says, Mom, I'm hungry. Dad, I'm hungry. What are you going to do? You say, yeah, I love my child. No, yeah, yeah, I love you, sweetheart. And then you continue doing your work. What do you do? You stop. You meet the need of the child because you love the child. My child is hungry, so I'm going to give that child food and minister to the need of the child. Meet the child in her need. While I'm working on this in my office, the child comes crying. Yeah, he's crying. I jump up and I say, what happened? What happened? Papa, I've fallen down. I say, okay, come, 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 come. Come, come. Immediately I'll get some Dettol, you know, clean the wound, put some Neosprin, put a bandage, say go, 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 play, yes or no? My child comes and says, Dad, I'm in trouble, like, what happens, sweetheart? I'm finding my difficulty in mathematics. Come, 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 sit down, let me try and you'll help the child, no? I understand what I'm trying to say. My love for my child must be demonstrated in a very real way, meeting the child in a need. And that is what Jesus has come to do. Now, in the, in the previous part of the teaching, I told you, Jesus has come to take away sin. And you can also say sins. Both. Both are there in scripture. Okay? Now, so I must look into my life and see in what way is sin manifesting its life in my life. In every one of our lives, even in my life, there is a sin that's troubling me. There is a sin that's troubling you. Yes or no? Is there anyone in here freed from sin? Whatever that sin is. Now, now how I apply the scripture is this. I quote to myself the words of Jesus to me saying, Fritz, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And then I say to myself in my mind, Jesus, you love me. And because you love me, you died, you have died to take away my sin. And Jesus, here is my sin of lust. And I just, because he loves me, he's coming, he has died, he's already taken this lust away, and he sees me troubled with lust, and I believe he's loving me out of lust. Loving me out of anger. Loving me out of whatever my sins are. So you must, you'll have at least one or two or three, don't go generally, be very specific. What is the area of my life? Where am I falling in sin again and again and again? What is the sin I'm confessing to the priest week after week, week after week, week after week? That is your disease. That is your sickness. That is what's making life difficult for you. Separating you from God, from yourself, from your neighbor. And Jesus has died precisely to take away sin. And so, because he loves me, he's pouring his love. I believe that he's coming and he's taking away my lust away. And all I do is, I say, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now the problem lies here. Listen carefully to this. Have you understood what I'm saying to you so far? Yes, all of you? Okay. Now the problem lies here. Sometimes we love our sin. Because sin gives us pleasure. Sin gives us enjoyment. And real in my heart, God knows whether you're willing to, to forsake that sin, forsake that momentary pleasure, and allow Him to give you something far more satisfying, far more life-giving. It's up to me. And I've gone through the struggle. 
And I look at certain areas in my life. You know, the thought of denying myself of that area sometimes is so painful. It's all oh, my body saying, no, 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 no. How are you going to live without that? You've been indulged in that for so many years. You've sought pleasure in it so many years. Do you want to come out of it? My body is saying, no. But then I sit and I think and I say, oh God, I look at that sin and say, what do you do for me finally? You may give me some satisfaction. You may give me some pleasure. But afterwards you bring guilt, you bring shame. You separate me from God. You separate me from myself. You separate me from my neighbor. So against the feeling of my flesh, I say to that sin, get out. Get out. I don't want to. Go, go, go. I'm tired of you. I want to be freed. Now I come to Jesus. I, I call those words of Jesus in John 59. That the Father has loved me, so I love you, abide in my love. And I believe Jesus, because he loves me, he's loving me out of my sin. And I'll tell you, sisters... To be honest, there have been areas in my life. I met Jesus in 1972, so it's nearly 40 years now. And those areas have troubled me and troubled me and troubled me. <clears throat> and sometimes I've wondered and said, God, how much I've prayed? I've applied so many therapies. Why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Do I have to go to the grave with this sin troubling me? Is there no answer? And then sometimes, you know, I'll think and say, no, 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 maybe God wants to keep me humble. God wants to keep me dependent. So he's still allowing that sin to remain in my life. But immediately, that's why you must know scripture, no? If you don't know scripture, you'll go by your wrong thinking, your wrong understanding. Immediately the spirit will, will, will enable me and, and say, no, God is saying to you, Fritz, be holy for I am holy. God is saying in Titus 2.14, He gave himself for us that he might redeem me from every iniquity. So it is God's will to get me out of sin. So I cannot tolerate it. I cannot justify it. I cannot keep it there in my life. And now once this, this truth came to me, I applied it, applied it. And believe me, that sin has gone. But every day, every day, without fail, I know where I'm weak, where I'm vulnerable. And I allow him to just love me, love me out of this. And it's working. And now can you see my joy? I want to read to you what St. John of the Cross says. Which is confirming all that I have spoken to. He says, if a man has a great love within him, it's as if this love gives him wings and he endures life's problems more easily because he has in himself that light which is faith. To be loved by God and to let oneself to be loved by God in Christ Jesus. What does St. John of the Cross say? He says, if a man has a great love within him, love is the greatest power you know, that's why Jesus says to you and me in John 14, 15, in John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So to the extent I experience his love, I, I, I fall in love with Jesus, to that extent, sin becomes less and less attractive. Basically, what is sin? Why do we yield to sin? We... This is what sin is all about. Jesus, you don't satisfy me. Jesus, you don't fulfill me. Jesus, you don't give me pleasure. So because of that, I'm saying no to you and I'm going to this. That's what sin is. What will give me the two wings to rise above my sin, to conquer my sin, is the love to allow myself to be loved by God in Christ Jesus. The same as John 15, 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Jesus is saying, abide in my love. Remain united to my love. Draw upon my love. Call upon my love. Crowd for my love. You know, sisters and brothers, truly, the only, only thing you and I as Christians should really pray for, nothing else but the love of God. Nothing else. If I have the love of God, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. And then he continues to say, this act of allowing, see, listen carefully to this. This act of allowing oneself to be loved is the light 
that helps us to carry our daily burden. So this act, in other words, I must allow myself to be loved by God. I must dispose myself to be loved by God. I must open my love, life to the love of God. This act of opening myself to the love of God enables me to carry my daily burden. And holiness is not our work, our difficult work. Holiness. We all know God is saying, be holy for I am holy. But there's so much of unholiness in us. So how do I become holy? How beautifully at the mass, no? Just before elevation. You know what the priest says? Father, all life, all holiness comes from you, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the working of the Holy Spirit. How to become holy? There's no other way but opening ourselves to the love of God. Opening ourselves to the Holy. The Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son. Open the windows of the soul so that the light of God can enter and do not forget God because it is precisely in opening oneself to the, His light that strength is found. What is this light? This light is allowing myself to be loved by God. So holiness is not our work, our difficult work. The only way to become holy is open myself to the love of God. Allow myself to be loved by God. Now see, the last line. Let us pray to the Lord so that he will help us to find the sanctity. What is the secret of sanctity? What is the secret of becoming a saint? All of us are called to sainthood. What is the secret? Let us pray to the Lord that he will help us to find the sanctity. To allow ourselves to be loved by God, which is the vocation of us all, as well as being true redemption. St. John is saying, How, you know something, very often we say, you know, why has God created me? We think of the two commandments, yes or no? And we'll say, to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind, and love my neighbor as myself. No, 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 no. God has created me. That's what St. John is saying. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, God has created me. My vocation before God is, is to be loved by God. This is our vocation. And to the extent I allow myself to be loved by God, I will respond to Him, say no to sin, yes to holiness, and I start becoming transformed and becoming changed. Put down John 17, 26. Wow, this is such a beautiful verse. This last verse, these are as given to us in the Bible, okay? As given to us in the Bible, these are the last words of Jesus. Before he enters the garden of Gethsemane, he goes into his passion. The last words of Jesus. John 17, 26. And for me in this verse, Jesus is encapsulating the whole purpose of the incarnation. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. In this one verse. You know what he says in that verse? He says, Father, I have made known to them thy name. And will make it known to them that the love with which thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them, he says. He says, Father, I've come to the end of my mission. I'm going to the cross. And all these three years, I've been pointing to them, Father, Father, Father. God is your Father. God is your Father. Yes or no? Especially the Gospel of John. I've made known to them thy name. And will make it known to them. In other words, I'll give them an ongoing revelation of the Father of God. God is Father. I'm His little son. I'm His little daughter. I've got nothing to worry about. He cares for me. He loves me. provides for me. protects me. nurtures me. Everything is my Father. I've made known in thy name. And will make it known to them. Now see the next verse. That the love with which thou hast loved me may be in them. Father, that they will experience the same depth of love that I experienced here on earth as a man. 
It was your love that energized me. It's your love that motivated me. It's your love that enabled me to live this obedient life. And it's your love that's sending me to the cross and I'm saying yes. That the love which with thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Now for me, this is the most powerful antidote to sin. The love of God. Of course, there are, I've got six, <laughs> seven other therapies write to me and say, Brother, can you share with me the other seven therapies, how to come out of sin? All there from scripture. I'll send them to you. Apply them to your life. And you'll come out of your sinfulness, sinful areas, and move on with God. So never get discouraged with your sin. Never get discouraged. Jesus has come for sinners. Jesus has come to take away sin. So every day, open your life to him and believe because he loves you. He's loving you, taking that sinful area, breaking its bondage in your life, destroying its enslavement, and leading you surely but definitely to freedom. Be patient with yourself. Don't get discouraged. Understand? Because he loves you and he has come for sinners. Never, never get discouraged. So if there's a habit of sin in your life and ten times a week you're falling into that sin, when you open yourself to the, to the love of God sincerely, believing that you don't want the sin and Jesus is loving you out of the sin, after a certain time you'll find yourself nine times eight times, seven times, six times, five times, four times, three times, two times. It must be pulled from the root so that that sin doesn't attract you anymore. It's lost its taste. That's the way to deal with sin. That is why he has died. That is why all of us are called to sainthood. Saints are not one special person here and there. Trouble is we've gone so far away from the normal Christianity. And that's why we're all suffering so much. Is that clear? Come on, close your eyes. Think of one area that you're struggling with in your life. What is the area of sin that's disturbing you? That's making life difficult for you. You know you're not a free man. You're not a free woman. And for each of our lives, it will be something different. But I will know where I'm a captive. What is keeping me in bondage? What is disturbing my peace? What is making me unhappy? Now name that sin. Whether this lust, whether it's anger, jealousy, unforgiveness, anxiety, fear, whatever it is. Name it. Acknowledge that sin, sin in your life. Now say this after me. Now Jesus is saying these words to you. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. Abide in my love. Now you say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that because you love me, you went to the cross to take away sin. And I'm looking to you now to take away sin. And I believe, Jesus, you are destroying the, the, that habit of sin. Now just thank him in faith. Just thank him. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Believe. You must believe. He has come to take away sin. You'll call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus has come to save you from sin, and he's saving you from your sin now. Believe him. Thank him. And remain there as long as you can. Just thanking him. Just thanking him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't go by feelings. Don't go by signs. Walk by faith. Believing that he's now untangling those cords that have bound us for years. He's died to take away sin and he's taking that habit of sin away from you. Thank him in faith.
Amen. Amen. Now, deal with another area. You'll have at least one or two or three areas, strong areas. Every, and do you have to do this every day? Your problem is within you. You forget this teaching. I don't know. You're back to square one. The devil will come and steal all the graces you've received in this time. You'll go back to your old life. Because we don't know how to walk with Jesus. We don't know why Jesus has died. We're not looking to him for what he has come for. Then the enemy will come and steal everything away. Okay? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.